Some of you have been requesting that I get back by the water, and here you go. I've been kind of avoiding coming by the water since I've been back to Miami because the wind has been out of control here. And anytime you go by the water, the wind just picks up tremendously. So I'm trying to make sure you guys have the greatest viewing experience watching this video. But I'm gonna have a few good water shots for you in this one. And man, did I come across some fascinating news for today's video. Apparently there are some lending companies that gave out some massive bonuses to their employees, so much so that they want their money back now that the mortgage business is basically dead. When I read this, I just couldn't believe that this was happening. You know, you never really hear about people having to give back bonuses that they receive. You know, you always think, oh, all these big shot CEOs that receive bonuses of these companies that went out of business, they should give that money back, right? Well, yeah, they probably should. Well, in this case, it's kind of like that, except they're just regular employees that got bonuses and now are being forced to return their money. One guy that this happened to, his name is David Siegel, and he worked for Guaranteed Rate in 2021, and he got a signing bonus of more than $100,000 just to work for the company. And now that business has dried up, the company said that they want their money back. They actually fired him one month before the date when they could no longer ask for the bonus back and then immediately demanded the money after letting him go. And this isn't happening to just this guy, David. This is happening to hundreds of other employees that worked for guaranteed rate. Basically because they're not making any money on the mortgage side of things, they need to get income somehow. So now they're looking at you know, retracting these bonuses, which apparently they're totally within their legal limits to do. And apparently there is no remorse on this. Their attorney spoke up and said, we are not going to be apologetic about exercising our legal rights to recover our money. So if you're somebody who received one of these bonuses, rest assured, they're coming after you now. This house here is listed at almost $2 million and it's only a three bedroom, two bathroom with a pool. And they've been trying to sell this house on and off since pretty much 2014. They started listing it back then. They listed it in 2017. They listed it in 2018, 2019. I actually showed this house to a client a long time ago when I was still working real estate. And obviously nobody bought it since 1992. Flash forward to today, they're still trying to sell it, but at least their property tax bill is still low. It's only $3,800 a year because they bought it in 1992. And it's funny because this story kind of mentions exactly what I've been saying all along when it comes to this housing market. You know, at this point, it doesn't really matter what's, what happens, what the Fed decides to do. Either way, it's going to tank real estate in the long run because what it says is unlike previous housing downturns, there's no way out of this mess. And I agree, this is something I've been saying. So if inflation keeps going and the economy keeps chugging along the way that we've been seeing these crazy reports come out like the 4.9% GDP, then the Fed may continue to keep interest rates higher for longer or maybe even do more rate hikes and that will keep the housing market suppressed. And if the economy sinks and the Fed starts cutting rates, which is going to be inevitable, that's gonna happen at some point in the next year or two, then a recession's not gonna be that great for the housing market either. So no matter what happens at this point, housing's going to get corrected in the long run. And so many of these mortgage companies are starting to get desperate because the transaction volume is just not there anymore. One thing that they're doing is they're laying people off, they're merging with other lenders, and they're getting out of the business. They're just closing up shop. That's another thing that they're deciding to do. And literally just a couple years ago, this business was booming, okay? I mean, this guy got a $100,000 signing bonus in 2021, guys. That was only two years ago. Just fast forward two years later, and the whole industry is in the toilet. And basically these high interest rates have brought the entire mortgage industry to its knees and they've quickly went from feast to famine almost overnight. One thing that the Mortgage Bankers Association has been telling people is try to stay alive till 25. That's kind of been the, the motto that they're trying to get people to accept. Like, hey, you need to be able to try to hang on at least through 2025 because that's basically the only way to survive right now. And it's funny because 2025 was supposed to be the time when the market starts getting back to somewhat normal. But now, now that these inflation reports continue to come in hotter, the GDP reports are coming in hotter, and the unemployment numbers and the jobs numbers are not where the Fed wants it to be, maybe that's gonna get extended to 2026, 2027. Who knows 
where in the future this is going to go. But now you have a lot of people in the mortgage industry saying that right now is worse than 2008 because at least back then we had mortgage rates falling and it spurred a bunch of people to refinance who were actually in the position to do so and who actually had the equity. But now no one's refinancing because rates are high and everybody who has a locked in loan wouldn't dare to do that anytime soon. They talked to another guy who's been writing mortgages for 40 years and he says he doesn't re ever remember a correction like this in the past 40 years, okay? Because right now you have mortgage activity as lowest level that people have seen in 30 years. But even if you go back 30 years when the mortgage applications were about the same as they were today, at least there was probably a good chance that people were still refinancing then. And right now, that has dried up. Nobody has any incentive to refinance right now when you're looking at 30-year mortgage rates at over 8%. People have been losing jobs left and right in the mortgage industry, and employment has already gone down about 20% since 2021. And they're expecting yet another 10% decline by the end of this year. And the people who do still have their jobs are earning far less than they did a couple of years ago. In fact, we talked about this a few days ago, how people that are still in this business are literally earning up to half of what they did just two years ago, or maybe even one year ago. And it's pretty hard to survive on that, especially if you base your entire cost of living on your full salary and you don't live frugally, this could be the end for many of these people. You're gonna have to pony up the dough to buy this one at almost 5.6 million, six bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms. And of course, it's another flip. They just bought it back in 2022, a year ago for 4.2 million. Now they want 5.6. I don't know how anybody does this or why anybody buys properties when they see this, but whatever, it's not my problem. And they also flipped it back in 2017. Somebody bought it back then for 2.8. So this is another one of those hot potato houses with a $40,000 a year property tax bill. And that will go higher for the lucky winner, whoever decides this house is worth it. They talked to another guy who has his own mortgage brokerage business in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he says business is down 90% right now. And his headcount has fallen from 25 at the end of 2020 down to just seven people and here check this out this guy's living above his means too because he owns a three million dollar house over there in scottsdale and he wants to downsize it's a huge 7700 square foot house but guess what no one wants to buy it guys or maybe more like nobody can buy it because who has three million dollars in this sinking economy and this guy's claiming oh we were rug pulled and uh, rates are not supposed to be here like since when i mean i feel like so many of these guys are completely delusional on where interest rates are supposed to be and where they were at historically. Like, rates are not historically high, guys. It looks high now because they've been suppressed for the past 20 years. But when you go back in time for the last 40 or 50 years, mortgage rates are not high at all. In fact, they're pretty average. But our economy has been thriving in a low interest rate environment for far too long, and people have gotten used to that to the point where they now think that this is not normal. Now, going back to the earlier part of this story, Guaranteed Rate is the company that's asking for these signing bonuses back. And they're one of the biggest mortgage companies in the entire country. And its mortgage production went from 37 billion in 2019 to 115 billion in 2021. So business absolutely boomed, and people in this business thought that they were gonna be rich forever. And in fact, the $100,000 could even be on the small side when it comes to bonuses, because it says here that a few people even got over a million dollars. Imagine being asked to return that million dollars now that things are upside down with mortgages. And it's not just guaranteed rate that's asking for their bonuses back. Apparently, Nations Lending and Cross Country Mortgage, those two mortgage companies are asking for their signing bonuses back from people as well. And it seems pretty strategic the way that they're handling this, like they knew they were gonna let these people go before their time was up where they couldn't ask for the money back. And some of them actually left on their own 
and now time to pay up. And they're, they're serious, guys. It says here that they're going to continue to enforce these agreements. And they say that the former employees who have been sued know very well that they signed agreements, including promissory notes, making it crystal clear what they need to do to receive and earn the money, which kind of suggests that some of them didn't actually earn the bonus and didn't follow through with what they were supposed to in order to actually keep this money. And also, these bonuses were never permanent either because they were all structured as forgivable loans that could be forgiven after two years. So you see they were given in 2021 and fast forward to today, they want their money back before it's too late. Now this place is super expensive because it is a massive lot. $7.2 million says it's a five bedroom, five bath house. But when you dig into the details, it's actually 34,000 square feet of land here. So it's a massive waterfront lot and they bought it back in 2001 for only $610,000. They tried to sell it a couple times ever since June of 2022. No luck so far. Who knows, maybe they missed the boat. They must not have a homestead exemption here because their property tax bill is almost 60 grand a year. Imagine paying that, folks. And so basically people are refusing to pay these bonuses back and the mortgage companies are suing them in order to enforce these agreements. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any update on this in the future, if they actually win these cases and these people have to pay this money back. And so this guy, David, from the beginning of the story, he's been getting letters demanding that he pay this money back and saying that he wasn't meeting the performance goals, which apparently wasn't a part of the original contract to receive the bonus, and they've been continually pursuing him for the money. So another thing to watch out for, maybe not even just in the mortgage business, maybe for any type of job in general, because I've seen other jobs out there before with signing bonuses, and if you're not careful, you can be taken advantage of with this, or maybe not fully understand what you're getting yourself into. So just keep in mind, guys, if you ever get a signing bonus, there could be lots of strings attached to it. Now, just like a lot of these mortgage companies are getting desperate, one thing I've been desperate to share with you guys is opening up my silver play button from YouTube because it arrived when I was in California and I've been dying to open it up and share it with you guys. So check out this quick unboxing if you're interested in that and some things I have to say to you. And if you want to skip that, just go ahead and skip to the timestamp listed on the screen and get back to the video. Well, 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 here it is. I've been waiting for this thing for a very long time. Thanks to everybody who watches my channel. I finally got it. I actually earned this one day when I was in Stinson Beach and I remember the moment it happened. I was super happy and uh, thank you to everybody who watches my channel and I figured I'd just give you a little quick unboxing ceremony to show you the Michael Bordenero 100K subscriber plaque. Nice and protected. Oh, look at this. What do we got here? We got whoever inspected it. And they have a letter. Look at this. And really thick cardstock here. Do you remember your first subscriber? Your 100th or your 1,000th? I actually remember the 1,000 pretty vividly. <laughs> uh, chances are you do. And we know that you'll definitely remember your 100,000th subscriber. I wish I knew who that was. Your fans may have found you while searching YouTube, learned about you through a friend, or maybe you showed up as a recommended video. No matter how they came to your channel, your audience stayed and their numbers increased because of you and the community you've built. We're proud to honor your impressive milestone of reaching 100,000 subscribers with the Silver Creator Award. Congratulations. We know that you have many more stories to share with your community and we know your fans can't wait for you to amaze them even more with your commitment and creativity. So keep creating, keep building. We can't wait to see what you'll do next and we're here to support you along the way. And who knows, when you reach your 1 million subscriber, we may just write to you and ask, do you remember your 100,000th 
subscriber. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Neil Mohan, YouTube CEO. All right. Here it is, guys. All nice and wrapped in plastic. Woohoo! You know where this is gonna go? Right next to my Hetfield guitar up here, probably. Or maybe on the other side of the Joker. I'm not sure yet. What do you guys think? Where should it go? I gotta leave room for the second one when the million one comes up over here. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. This belongs to you just as much as it belongs to me. Thank you so much. Now here's something important that I've been wanting to cover ever since I made the video last week showing you guys my proposed property tax bill. There was a lot of comments that seemed to be uh, confused on how the whole Save Our Homes Act works here in Florida. Many people were asking, well, how can they raise your property tax bill by 15% or 13%, Michael, if you, know, you have a homestead exemption? Can it only go up by 3%? And that's a very good question and it shines a light on kind of how misleading this whole homestead exemption save our homes program actually is because contrary to popular belief that's not how it works guys in fact how it works is when you have a homestead exemption your assessed value of your property can only go up by three percent per year this has nothing to do with how much your actual tax bill can actually be because like I shared with you guys in that video, the majority of the taxes are being increased from Miami-Dade County, the city of Miami Beach, and the school board, which was the biggest one. And so if I use my own example here to show you what I mean, my previous assessed value was $484,674, but then it went down to $458,910 once I got my homestead exemption. So my assessed value went down, but my property tax bill is still going up. And that just goes to show you that this 3% per year increase is total bogus, guys. It's a fallacy. And, you know, it just applies to your actual assessed value. Because all that means is that by next year, that my assessed value cannot be higher than 472000 677 because that would be a 3% increase or it's supposed to go by CPI whichever is lower so say if CPI is magically 2% next year which is consumer price index then they can't raise it by more than 2% rather than 3% but since CPI has been through the roof and has been over 3% they can do by 3% every single year because they're adjusting your assessed value with inflation unless you contest it, which I am going to contest it, and I'll let you know if I win. And so I still don't even know how they can raise taxes by this much without people's okay. You know, how come the local county, the city, and the school board can all simultaneously raise taxes on people by 15% in one year without voter approval? Because I just voted, guys, and the, the voting ballot this year is empty. The only thing we had to vote for was who's going to be mayor of Miami Beach and who the commissioners are going to be. There was no other measures on the ballot about raising taxes, approving any referendum this year or anything. It was pretty sparse compared to most years. Like every other year in the past when I voted, most years you're looking at at least two or three pages worth of referendums and law changes and things they try to implement. This year it's nothing. And the fact that they can just go ahead and increase those taxes without people's approval to me is criminal. You know, people are so concerned about voting and worried about which politicians get into office and this and that. But at the end of the day, I feel like it almost doesn't even matter because at the end of the day, your opinion no longer counts when it comes to the most important stuff like how much you actually have to pay on your annual property tax bill. And no matter who gets elected, that's not gonna change. Yeah, sure. I saw you doing your video. Uh, I'm shooting one right now. Say hello to the camera. What's your name? Hi, I'm Lo. You're nice Lo? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lo. Okay, take a picture with me because Let's my husband selfie. loves you. And I know no one, but I recognize you. Awesome. <laughs> He's going to be so excited. Cool. Tell Bye. him I said hi and uh, thanks for watching. I will, of course. Man, that's so cool. I love running into people on the street like that. Hello to Lo's husband. Your wife was super nice. 
and uh, thank you for watching my channel. Now on top of people re being required to give back this money for the bonuses, we also got another story this week about layoffs, okay? And this is related to an insurance company. Steve sent me this story how Liberty Mutual Insurance Company is going to be cutting around 850 jobs or 2% of its workforce this month, which makes it the latest insurance company to announce layoffs because insurance companies just like mortgage companies are also feeling the pain right now or so they say because even though they're collecting sky high premiums from everybody they're crying about how they're not making money either because the payouts are too high they have to spend too much money when it's time to actually pay out a claim and it's not just liberty mutual guys you have geico they're laying off 2,000 people, which is 6% of its workforce. You have Farmers Insurance. They cut 2,400 people, which is 11% of their workforce back in August. And there's a couple other ones too, called Germania and Cowbell. I've never heard of either one of those companies, but they're doing layoffs too. I have to bring these things up because I'm getting tired of people talking about how we're still hitting this soft landing and people hear these ridiculous GDP figures and claiming that that means everything is okay. But clearly it's not okay when you have your old mortgage employer banging at your door for their bonuses back because they're going broke and you have insurance companies which should be making all-time high profits right now with the amount of premiums that they're collecting also firing people. How is that a sign of a strong economy, guys? And I realize a lot of this mostly surrounds the real estate industry, but you have a lot of people saying how real estate is fine and that nothing's happening here and prices are still up and you know all is good with that, inventory is still low. Like, none of that stuff is permanent, you know? Housing markets move through cycles and all of that is subject to change and it will change. We don't know when, but when it does, it's going to have a major impact on home prices, and everybody's life. So don't sit there and think that the way things are right now are the way it's going to be indefinitely because it is a guarantee that things will turn around in the future. The problem is nobody knows when that will be. And I can't name a date for you just like nobody else can. But I think it's super important to be ready for that change so when it does happen, you're prepared. And I, get, I love when I get the messages from you guys telling me how you're doing this. In fact, I got an email from a young man the other day talking about how he's saving for a home, can't afford what, where he wants to live right now, but he's saving and taking advantage of building his credit score and increasing his income and putting money on the side in order to make it happen when the time is right. And eventually that time will come. So people like that will win and the ones who choose to not listen will lose. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.